Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix. And, of course, welcome to a new full playthrough. I think the first, or if not the first, then the first in a very long time of... Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix. And, of course, welcome to a new full playthrough, the first modded full playthrough in a very, very long time for the channel. Today, we are playing with three separate mods. We have Planetary Diversity, we have Civics and Ethics Classic, uh, version 3, and we have Amazing Space Battles. Now, I absolutely adore the Ethics and Civics, I absolutely adore the Planetary Diversity, Never used Amazing Space Battles before. Apparently, it is really, really good. It makes battles last a little bit longer, it makes them a bit more cinematic, and it makes sure that you can see what's going on a little bit better, at least what I've been told. I've purposefully stayed spoiler-free for that, so we're going to see the battles and have a lot of details of those in the playthrough itself. But before any of that, let's get into the Empire. And actually, before that, let's talk about ethics and civics a little bit, because as you can probably see, there's a fair few more than usual, like... A good fair few more. So with Ethics and Civics Classic, there are different versions out there, but this is my personal favourite, it's the Classic version, we have a load of new ethics. In some cases, one type of ethic has been split to be more specific, and in other cases, they've just been added. So, for instance, a new thing is Fanatic Ecocentrist, or just Ecocentrist in general, and then on the other side, we have Anthropocentrism. Can never say that right the first time, attempted it earlier, completely messed it up, maybe got it right then, who knows. So these two are the opposites of each other, this one is all about being kind to nature and loving nature and all that good stuff, whereas this one is more about, you know nature has shiny things, let's go get the shiny things, too bad if a few animals may die in the process. And the list goes on, we have things like cooperative, which is more about everyone working together, anti-trade value and everything else. If you go with the fanatic option of that, for instance, you can go with certain civics, which are a little bit on the nose, such as socialistic ideals over here, with a, a very specific symbol there, which I have played before in a past full playthrough. And it's actually a very fun way of playing, or you can go the complete opposite for full trade value, and that is also incredibly fun. I do find a lot of the fanatic options here, and a lot of the more specific civics can be really fun, especially in a role-playing full playthrough, which I will be doing soon, I do promise that. But for now, rather than get into every single detail, let's talk about what we are. We of the Church of the Holy Spore, because for some reason at the moment I'm just on a kick of corrupted nature and nature killing things. I don't know why I like that so much at the moment, but I do. I mean, the fact I'm a trained pathologist and have many, many venomous and dangerous animals may be a hint that I like this kind of stuff, but only a very subtle one. So to begin with, we are fanatic ecocentrist, which means we love nature. It costs less minerals to produce consumer goods and alloys, and then it gets a bit more specific and a bit more complicated after that. We really love natural blockers on planets, things like volcanoes and trees and dangerous kelp and everything like that. They provide us unity and amenities and society and also, as you'll see soon, also help us with habitability and all sorts of stuff, so we really want to keep the planets as they are. Although my end goal this run is to make either everyone a Gaia world or make every world a bioluminescent world, one of the new worlds in the planetary diversity which we'll get onto in a little while. In addition to that we also get extra habitability, less consumer goods upkeep, less upkeep from our districts and we get more of, of a refund back if we start to redevelop worlds which isn't the best thing but it's nice to be just tagged on there but this all does come at the cost of 5% population growth speed. All of these fanaticals come with some kind of negative. So you could just go with all the standards, since you do have 5 ethics points rather than just the usual 3, but uh, yeah, the fanatic ones can be a little bit crazy as well. Their extra 10% habitability, as you'll see later, is kind of my goal. I want every single planet, and I want it very quickly. Then we have Spiritualist, it's Spiritualist. We have Militarist, it's Militarists. And then we are also Cooperative. So with cooperative, we have more worker happiness, we have less housing usage, and we get a little bit of a bonus to our research speed for society. We all like to work together, we all believe that nature is the true way forwards, and we're going to crush anyone who says otherwise. Probably with poisons and spores and poisonous spores. 
you get the idea. Over on Civics, we have three, and I've really chosen all the complex ones here, so I have to explain them. Because I can do reading and talking well. So I'll try and keep this as brief as I can. With Keepers of Harmony, the very first one, it once again really wants you to get blockers. The blockers now also increase your habitability and provide housing. In addition to this, they give you druids. Now, druids are amazing. Druids give you unity. They don't cost any upkeep other than the natural upkeep of the species itself. And they also increase the population growth speed on the planet by 5%. Doesn't sound like much, but some worlds with loads of blockers can maybe have 30 to 50% extra growth speed because of that. I think I got 55 at the very best, but they can really stack up. It's like the gene clinics, but without the consumer goods upkeep and without the upkeep of the building itself. Really, really powerful, especially if you try and stack them. Now, because of this... Mining districts do cost amenities now, because there has to be some kind of negative worked in there. Although we can remove things like Wild Storms and mu uh, Mutant Stalker, that's a thing. Well, well, we can remove it, so it's not a problem when we see it, which is pretty lovely. The actual effects passively on top of that is we get one extra druid per 50 populations on the planet, less food upkeep, less mineral upkeep for our populations, even less consumer goods upkeep, and less amenities usage though we lose one district on every single planet. That's going to add up, considering we want so many. But, yeah, the benefits there, really good. Blockers, even more powerful now. I like how I said I was going to keep it short, and then just waffled way too long there. With Natural Heritage, once again, blockers. They can now also give us things like miners, technicians, and farmers, which is lovely, so I don't need those districts, which we're going to lose because we're keeping the blockers, remember. They also give us more housing and provide a little bit of unity and increase amenities. Rare natural blockers give you even more of that. There are no negatives. It's basically just buffing up the ecocentrist here without anything else being added. And then finally, we have Defenders of Nature. So Defenders of Nature is the militarist option here. We need to be both militarist and ecocentrist. This will give us, once again from blockers, rangers. Rangers will increase our navy capacity, provide a little bit of unity, and also give us the option to have alloy producing jobs and duelists from certain specific blockers as well which is great so a brand new job from the blockers increasing our navy capacity what can go wrong with that but my favorite part of this is the following we are essentially a devouring swarm but weaker because now our daily hull and daily armor regen is increased because we are making biological ships which is great, although you do now also get uh, a really weird side effect of your metallurgists also cost food, but less minerals, but they cost food. I don't actually like this personally, but it's worth it for everything else. We also have less ship upkeep, at the cost of our ships having less health and less hit points. Still worth it though, they heal constantly, and they cost less to keep around. So, we like to kill other people using biological ships. We are the Holy Spore, our fungus ships will block out their suns. Onto the species itself, then we need to talk about the homeworld, and this is getting really empty already. So we are extremely adaptive and we are rapid breeders. We are all about getting on every single planet as fast as possible and having those lovely blockers affect us. We are fleeting, slow learners, and repugnant because all we care about is nature. I doubt we're going to care about ourselves and those around us all that much. It's all about nature. So some of our actions may be a bit repugnant to others. Our origin, once again, is Scion, but this time it's going to be almost a complete hindrance since I haven't got the fleet from them once in the last five test runs and I want to make a federation can't while you're a scion so it's actively weakening us in my opinion in comparison to a lot of the other origins but I am choosing this because I like the idea of this empire being created to make the world the galaxy beautiful only to find that they don't find you beautiful and then go to war with the fallen empire to make it beautiful we're going to rebel as soon as possible. I almost always go with the Fallen Empire and try and be on their side all the way through because I find that fun. But this time, as fast as possible, we are going to try and break free and destroy them. Make them beautiful. And now, to the world. 
So here with the worlds, you can probably see there are a lot of options here now. Just loads of stuff in addition to the normal worlds, which add just a lot of variety, which is really pretty and just makes me very happy to see. But then the interesting bit is the fact we have these two rows at the bottom, which are the rare worlds. Things like the rogue world, which originally had no sun, but has only just recently been recaptured. We have things like the eyeball world, where there's an ocean just about on one little bit of the planet, and everything else is completely frozen. The super continent the primals, just loads of options. Now, most of these, in fact, no, all of these have both positives and negatives, with the positives vastly outweighing the negatives, though I can't remember any of them except for the salt world. So I have chosen the bioluminescent purely because it's my favourite. It's the prettiest in my opinion, the oceans glow on the dark side of the planet, and you have this lovely eerie purple light, since almost every single one of the plants and animals and everything glows because they're all bioluminescent, because of the thick spore cloud constantly surrounding the world, so there isn't really all that much light. It's also what traps in a lot of the heat and allows it to thrive in the way it does. We are the holy spore. Thanks to this cloud and thanks to us, as you can see here, life thrives. The only one I can really remember is the salt world. I know it gives you extra minerals and I know it gives you the special building which gives you trade value and something else. But other than that, I can't really remember the rest. So I'm not really choosing this one because it fits the playstyle or anything like that. It's just, I like the world and the holy spore makes me laugh. So that is pretty much it. And that is it really before we get going. So let's make sure I've saved all that. Done. And then we are not going to be using scaling difficulty this time. So it's going to be a lot harder on us because I do think this empire is going to be quite powerful. Uh, we have everything on aggressive. We have the growth required scaling on the minimum option. Because I do like it being there in theory, but I don't like it in its default state because I find it a bit too oppressive. And that is that. Let's just begin. And yes, advanced starts are allowed. Hopefully not near me. Hey everyone, as always, Future Lathrix here. I've just finished editing this video together. It took about four days to get the footage for, and it was just an insane amount of fun. Now, normally, I would do the entire playthrough in one video. That's always the goal with these, but as, as usual, something has happened. So with this, there was just loads of footage to use straight away because of the mods, and especially the space battles, which it becomes very obvious. I'm absolutely in love with that mod. But also, there's a very important question I ask at the end of the video. There will be a poll in the community tab within 24 hours after this video goes up, and it's asking about how we're going to convert every world in the galaxy. Because it turns out, there's more than one option. They're all very fun, and a few problems occur as well, because things I didn't understand will happen. With all that said though, I will now shill, because these videos take so long and can be poison for the channel, if you do enjoy them, likes and comments are massively helpful as it actually turns them to a positive for the channel and lets me dedicate so much time to a single video, whereas normally I wouldn't be able to do that while still sustaining channel growth and making a living from this, which I am very honoured to do. So if you like it, give it a like, it helps. Now on with the video. And so we begin. In a second, our overlords will talk to us. Hello, overlords! You are penguins! Yep. So here's our world. Which was auto-named, because I like the name, honestly. So here it is. You see the thick spore cloud covering everything, the little purple lights everywhere, and then the luminescent ocean. It's so creepy, and I absolutely adore it. Think of all the venom and crazy animals on this world. It just makes me happy inside. I'm in a very happy mood today. I don't really know why either. So, uh, honestly, we're going to try and grab as many worlds as possible. So, research station is great. Population growth, thank you. I will be going down the genetic ascension route. And let's go with the hangar bays. Now, one thing I'm going to choose straight away is I'm not actually going to allow robots at all. I don't think that fits the Empire. I'm not super role-playing this empire, but I am going to try and do my best to represent them at least a little bit in our choices. So, no robots. Of course, machinery could be made super efficient. It could be more efficient than our populace. But I don't think this empire would see it that way, especially with the spiritualist kind of thing they're going with as well. So we do have a lot more options here because of the mods, so let's go through them. Um, the authority stance will be for later. Currently, telecommunications I'll be setting to civilian, since there's no need to be a military when there's no enemies to be military against. Same with the transport. These will be changed later, um, because I want the extra navy capacity and everything else, but for now... 
more trade value, don't really care too much about that, but the immigration bonus and everything is great for us. Over here, we do have extra admin cap and survey speed, that's the big one, so I want to try and get as many systems surveyed as possible, at the cost of 33% of your navy capacity. It's pretty brutal, but good early on. Education is going to be public. Hate this, because in my opinion, the private education is just better, it gives you the specialist output at the cost of crime, but public, we're meant to be cooperative, Everyone is equal, as long as they serve nature. Uh, we're going to be public education. And same with healthcare. At least this time I actually prefer this one. Uh, private gives you trade value uh, from your medical workers at the cost of just the growth speed. Whereas public health care just gives you extra uh, growth speed at the cost of extra upkeep. I guess that's us paying into the system. At least that's the idea of it. Uh, with the economic stance, we can't ever choose free market because we're cooperative, but we can have planned. It's the extreme opposite. It's the state controlling the economy, giving us extra energy credits, extra minerals, extra monthly food, and a severe cost of trade value because we kind of control everything. But it's really good for us because we are going to be very worker heavy, so the food, minerals, and energy Yep, that's what we want. Anyway, we can always go down the more neutral route here. Ooh, actually, that one's still pretty... Ooh, plus 5% influence gain. Like that, but the market fee is horrible, plus 20%. And then there's the mix, which is just neutral. No positives, no negatives. But we are going to be going with that one for now. Population controls allowed when I want them. Trade policy, I'll be swapping over to marketplace of... No, social development. If it's the empire, better. Trade value no longer gives me any energy, but gives me society, unity, consumer goods, and food. There's so much to explain. This may be a very long full playthrough. Mixed economy. As soon as we find any enemies, we're going to swap a lot of these to militarists, because remember, we are militarists. Not fanatically, but we are. Expansionist. And that's everything there, yes. Yeah, so, let's have a look at our unique building then. Since we are on a bioluminescent world, giving us consumer goods, society, food, I am talking so much this full playthrough already, my speech is going to be destroyed in five minutes. It's really good, but building speed is limited. Wait. I thought it gave you way more negatives than that. Okay, this is a fantastic world. Now, to make other worlds bioluminescent, you need the same ascension perk as the Gaia Worlds version, which is... World Shaper. Without that, you can't make anything into rare worlds, so we need this because I want every single world in the galaxy as bioluminescent, if possible, if the game doesn't break. It will be a bit more laggy because of the mods, so we'll see, but I'm really hoping I can do every single world, as that's a lovely goal. So here's our special building. Society research and unity at the, at the cost of consumer goods, and you get one extra jungle ranger per 20 pops, so... These preserves protect the jungles to make sure they will be around for generations to come. Yep, that fits the Empire perfectly. So to begin with then, what I want to do is remove the slums. Build everything in this system. And then we'll wait until we can make some more science worlds. Ooh, a mangrove world. But that's pretty. I was correct. So I touched on this earlier, but we are extremely adaptive, giving us plus 20% habitability. Then we are ecocentrist, giving us plus 10% in addition, which means our basic habitability is plus 30%. On most worlds, that means it's a minimum of 50, except for tomb worlds and those type of things, where it'll be 30. We are going to grab pretty much every world. And remember, we do get a little bit of extra habitability, depending on how many blockers there are. So I'm actually hoping for worlds with as many blockers as possible. Three is fine. Three is fine, although none of the heavy blockers, sadly. Yeah, only the minus ones. The minus twos give us extra things because of some of our civics, which is really what we want. And we're going to need a lot of food as well, because I normally don't really go heavy into clone vats. I, so far, I'm not a massive fan of them since they've been reworked. But I've been told, over and over and over again, they're actually very good. So clearly I'm missing something here. So I'm going to go full into System clone vats. Maybe I'll be a convert of the clone. Maybe I'll just be more not into them as before I was. Yep. So here's our first world. You can see all the stats there. We get a lot from these blockers. Now that's going to be great in the early game and the mid game, but in the late game... This will be very small, very small bonuses there, so we'd really have to capitalise on that. We can either be super greedy, knowing that we have enough backup stuff that we can just go 
completely into expansion, 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 before becoming hostile in the mid-game. Or we can be a bit more conservative about that and really get everything we can from these worlds and be aggressive in the early game. I think the mid-game option is best because it puts us in a better position in the end game. The end game crisis is still 100 years early, so that is pretty lovely. So here are the druids, plus 5% population growth, as I mentioned before, and a lot of unity. That's exactly what we want. And the blockers are giving us enough amenities for everyone to be happy, because we're using the forests for our immunities. Scientific breakthrough Which also means we're using them as our toilets. I honestly think I'm just going to completely rush Unity. Already we've got an insane amount of Unity. We've already finished our first tradition. Is this an overpowered build? I think I may have accidentally stumbled on an overpowered build. But still, yeah, going with the Druids and then the Rangers. The Rangers provide far less Unity than the Druids, but they still will. And they'll give us loads of Navy capacity. Maybe we'll even be able to keep the minus 33% without having to deal with that. It all depends on what worlds we get. Haven't seen any more worlds yet, and this is definitely a build which requires more worlds. Scientific Some worlds can be a bit more uh, tall rather than wide. This this empire needs to be wide. It needs to grab everything System it can. So now I've finished expansion, System I instantly grabbed complete. Interstellar Dominion. Uh, not my favourite precursor there, but that's fine. Uh, next I'm going to grab Domination for that extra influence, and then maybe Harmony or Prosperity. The extra mining station output plus everything else is going to be super useful. And we're going to have a lot of traditions done very quickly and that's going to be our main strength. The passive effect of domination literally against our empire though. Clear blocker cost reduced. Situation Great. Update. I'm never going to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Stellaris gods. <laughs> we found a Gaia world, not only a Gaia world, a Gaia world with two of the heavy blockers on it. And a bonus there. Yep, beautiful. And it's even a primitive civilization, which means we can just grab it straight away as soon as we get over there. Now over here, there's another world, is sadly a tomb world, which means it's probably not going to have many natural blockers, if any. It has one, and it's a heavy blocker, so that's good. Will I colonize this? Ooh, new artwork. Really like that artwork. Uh, I mean, maybe I will. Maybe, maybe. But obviously, the Gaia world has to come first now. So there and then there. So we have our first factions. We have the Spiritualist faction, who is happy because we're not al even allowing robots, which is great. Never gonna go psionic, I'm afraid. But everything else, major happy. So that's good. Uh, next up, we have the Militarist. He want wait, being the subject of a foreign overlord will greatly displease. Well, that's not actually happening right now. Yeah, you should be sadder than you are. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I will call out anything which is benefiting us, even if it's not meant to. Okay, so recycling is what you want. You want to have a Gaia world, which you're about to, actually. Ecosystem diversity. Colonization of all possible types of habitable planets. Arid, desert, savanna, alpine, archine, tundra. Oh, lord. Uh, we'll make them happy. And then they also want some of the rare worlds. Well, you're about to be happy because of the Gaia world. And you are 31% of our population, so that's good. And the spiritualists are already 70%. But uh, sadly, they're, they're going to be stuck at that. Since we're not going to go psionic. Ooh. What does that world look like, then? Oh, wow. It's disgusting. I love it. The Gaia world is glorious. So we have the mountains there giving us nine unity, but it's the jobs they're giving us. In fact, both of them are giving us nine unity. So we have two metallurgist jobs. We have some miners, some farmers, some technicians, just... I won't have to build anything here for a Systems very long time. Though I do need to deal with my Empire Sprawl, though I feel that's going to be an uphill battle considering I want to grab everything as fast as possible. And soon we're going to be able to do it with more, with more influence. And food's already becoming a problem as well. I guess that is one of the issues. Us being kind of greedy, allowing all these specialist jobs is going to hinder us. But again, in the long term... Getting these worlds up and running so fast because of the extra population growth is lovely. Uh, plus 5.42 on a world without its upgraded um, admin is really nice. Ooh, we have a rare feature. Oh yeah, the old factory. We have a boring rare feature. 
Now, although we do want to conquer everyone, it should be known we're not xenophobes. In fact, we love all species. We just don't trust any of the empires to care for nature and the well-being of the galaxy in the long run. That's why being so hyper-aggressive, everything will be beautiful. But we don't trust these children to um, have the beautiful thing without breaking it. That's kind of our philosophy here. Now, amazingly, there's another... It's a rare world. It's a rare primitive world. It's a rare primitive world with 24 population. What even is this? Due to high levels of rare earth metals and unusual magnetic activity, this planet has created rare ring-shaped mountain formations. This allows for a unique place for physics experiments and mining opportunities, or physics experiments, as a person would say. The metals can also be used in many consumer products. That's lovely. More upkeep, which kind of sucks, but, um, yeah, consumer goods, minerals, and physics, that's wonderful. Sadly, no natural, um blockers because it's already I guess early space stage? No machine age, so one step off. And we got some shrooms. Agrarian shrooms. Agrarian shrooms who like the planet. Oh no, most of them are elitist. Which is not what we are. Oh well. Either way, they'll be uh, thinking like us soon Scientific. enough. So we've taken over this world, and apparently it's not as good as I'd hope. Um, the extraction center here is four consumer goods for five minerals and six society research. Sorry, six physics research for two jobs. Uh, lanthanide, not the best special job there. Maybe I'll get it later if the population really spikes, but. Yeah. If it was called Lathanide, then I would be saying how fantastic it is for some reason. Not sure why, but I would. Still though, um, this is going to be a food and admin world at the moment. I kind of love the concept of that. We've just... We're aliens. Imagine this. Aliens take over planet Earth. They finally arrive and to actually talk to us. And they claim, your governments are so fluid. You are doing things so well. And your bureaucrats are oh, just the best bureaucrats we've ever seen. You're going to do our admin work from now on. That's why we've taken over your world. And it's like a personal hell. Just admin work. Forever. Everyone. Just so much paperwork. You walk the path of heresy, alien scum. But please don't dislike us too much. I mean, don't want to go to war right now. Ugh. You know, we can be good friends. The second way the envoy is ready, though, I am going to be building a spy network <laughs> in your world. You know, the whole shaky hand, knife behind your back with the other hand. You know, the, the usual diplomacy. My kind of diplomacy, at least. You know, the Lathrix profile picture is literally a two faced person. Always in need of more influence. So they just opened their borders to us. So apparently they don't dislike us that much. So the reason why they were so unhappy with us was there may have been a little bit of a misunderstanding. You know, I've got the hostile protocols and I may have tried to eat some of their crew members when we first met. I failed. I didn't do it. So clearly we're now best of friends again. But in all honesty, yeah, I don't know if they're an advanced start or what. All I know is there is some of their borders. That's all I know about them right now. My spies are working hard, doing very little. And eventually I'll know. So I'm really glad about that, though, because it looks like they're not going to attack us. Because they do share cooperative and militarist with us. Uh, they are also libertarian, which is nothing for us. As in, nothing against us. It isn't the opposite of cooperative or anything else, so we have no negatives except for the fact we tried and failed to eat their crew. That's it. If anything, they should be happy that we think they're our snack. We found that the rare world is a primal world. Energy and alloys. There we go. Rare metals are simply surfacing because of the... Ooh, pretty system as well. But rare metals are surfacing because of the volcanoes and everything else, so I think it makes sense as well for that to be our alloy world. Not only we're we not going to harm the world as much as other worlds with that kind of industry, but it also gives us a bonus, so it's both System gameplay sharing. and roleplay. All the things at once there. Keep an eye on it. What a shame. Please research it. Situation log updated. Why are three of you there? That system apparently was a lot of work for our people, and we are out of influence again. 
You know how they're called the rare worlds? Rare worlds? Apparently they're less rare than I expected. Uh, geothermal world here. Oh, thank you, 200 influence. That is beautiful. So... System survey complete. Kinda pretty. Scientific Kinda green. Kinda white. Achieved. Due to the abundance of geothermal activity, energy generation opportunities are rich on this planet, and the slurry of minerals that the pools bring to the surface are useful for alloy production. So once again, another alloy world. So I guess I'll use both of the rare worlds for my foundries. I'm okay with that. We currently have an industrial world, we have a generator world. I'm actually trying to specialise our worlds properly for once, because that is one of... That's definitely one of the things when it comes to my macro that I really do badly, like really badly. I keep on having really general worlds, whereas the game definitely promotes you specialising in them as much as possible to get those bonuses, and that can really min-max everything. So, for once, try my best to do that. Will I do that successfully? Who knows? Ooh, more aliens. Uh, can we get some kind of deal so I don't have to have one of my people here all the time? Any chance at all you'll accept five? Ooh, lovely. You will allow us to buy fivers from you. That's actually really good. Oh, this is my back fry emulator giving you fivers in return, but yep, there we go. Come on. Say yes. I know you're going to say yes. You might as well say yes now. One of the other new buildings we have is the Nature Sanctuary. This increases unity from jobs on the world, which is already so good, but it also increases happiness and ecocentrism attraction. It also gives you an extra druid job, so one more druid, even more population growth. We also got very lucky there, so we found some of their wreckage, we gave it them back. We do now have a research agreement with them, so we'll be gaining happiness over time. So I can move my envoy over here. How is my... Oh, that's why my admin cap wasn't increasing. You weren't actually doing the jobs. Achieved. Two heavy blockers, one normal. And despite the fact this is giving minus habitability, we have 68% habitability because of those blockers and we have a lot of druids. Though we are growing the shrooms, I think they have more natural habitability here, which is a shame, but okay. We could stop them from migrating, but... Again, we're not meant to be xenophobic in any way. We are all about nature, and that's it. Nature, the spirit of nature, how nature's great. Yay, nature. Oh, this is a rare world type. We're just finding all the rare worlds. Over here, I think there's a storm world. Oh, God, there's another Gaia world. Okay, I... I swear... I don't understand why the game is being so nice. Okay, so what's the unique um, building then for this? So straight away, this gives us more food. That's wonderful uh, at the cost of minerals. Also more upkeep and less mining districts. So almost completely devoid of ore. Oh, that's a fantastic... Oh my god, that's a fantastic job. I wish I had this world to begin with. So this gives food and a lot of society research at the cost of consumer goods. Well, hopefully we can... Um grow fast here. Probably not. We only have the one druid, but still. We also have our magma world over here, the uh, primal world. We have the magma mine, which gives us engineering research and alloys at the cost of consumer goods. That's, that's lovely. And we even found another... I don't get it. I, I, I just... The game, nice to me, is... It knows I'm in a good mood once wants to keep me that way. I'm rarely in a good mood. So with the geothermal world, we have the geothermal slurry site. Nice! A labyrinth of industrial pipes flows through the cusp of the geothermal vents in this area, pumping in the water and pulling out thick mineral-rich slurry. Engineering research and, and alloys at the cost of consumer goods. Okay. The line at the cost of consumer goods is starting to sound really weird now, I keep saying it. Ooh. And also just more amenities in this world. This is a fantastic energy world. I'm, I'm actually tempted by energy. Because we can't really do trade value, which is my normal way of getting as much energy as possible, I think we might need this more for just energy. Though I do love the extra alloys, I'm not sure. This is... So it's plus 15% energy. That is so insanely tempting. I'm really hoping that missiles look better in this. 
Because that's, that's actually one of my big problems with normal Stellaris, because for those who've been around on the channel for more than five minutes, you'll realise that missiles are my favourite weapon in almost every single game. And the torpedoes and weapons in the normal Stellaris, they're very easy to miss, so I'm really hoping that's better. Currently waiting a little bit longer before we start any other, any aggression. Because I haven't seen any, any of the space battles yet, I don't want my first space battle to just be a few corvettes. I want it either to be a full swarm, or more preferably, different sizes of ships. So we see things like destroyers and everything else, maybe on artillery or something. Now over here I've just put down loads of stations because we have the nebula refineries. Currently they're only giving us minerals, but once we have the tech to collect um, exotic gas, They'll also give us that. We're doing the same over here as well. I have misplaced. I thought I was in the nebula. Am I mistaken? No, I still have the alloys for it. Okay. And there we are. Ooh. Wait, what? The, the curator order has defeated a leviathan. How? What? How can the cre... What? How can the curator destroy a leviathan? That's not one of these stations. Oh, the wraith, maybe. If there's any other way, please tell me in the comments, because I am really curious. How do we have... I didn't even notice this one. Wait, that's another lichen... This... Two lichen rods? That's how you pronounce that, right? Lichen? Lichen? I know what it is, I just don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, that's cute. So the opposite of the hostile fauna event, well, not event, um, trait for the world, whatever you want to call it, we have docile fauna. This world has evolved extremely docile and friendly fauna, and the surface is rife with curious, friendly creatures that are easily domesticated. Their biology and kind demeanour offer great race research opportunities. Oh, that's my favourite world. I want, to, I want to be on this world. So, the Empire over here has declared war on us. I don't know how strong they are in comparison to us, but most importantly, I don't know how strong they are in comparison to our Bastions, which are 8k at least. We managed to get uh, the rank 2 of Strikecraft quite early, and we they're both Strikecraft based, so we're quite strong there. Don't really have many ships though. I'm building a couple, I just sent some over here because of an asteroid event. I don't trust this to go well. They're not moving. They were moving. Now they stopped. I think they've now realised, although they are very strong, and there's no way I could ever invade them, good luck getting past the scary station with its scary child. Which both have scary children inside of them because they're using Strikecraft. It's a lot of scary stacked up there. So we're just going to stare at each other angrily? You were moving. Scientific breakthrough achieved. Okay. Uh, I am also moving my fleets over there to try and head them off, I suppose. Can't see what else I can really do. Well, I thought I was strong, but you're actually equivalent to us tech-wise as well, and I thought I was doing really well for that, so... Systems, uh, yeah, we're equal in every way, except for you have a much better military than me, but I've gone super defensive, and I'm so glad I did. Ooh, I'm actually getting some problems with you. You know what? I would rather make sure you don't become hostile to me as well, rather than have more intel. Ooh, Science am I actually beating you on tech? Yes, okay, I'm beating someone on tech, so I'm happy at least. And we just got some basic terraforming. Now, sadly, I can't terraform worlds which I'm already inhabiting or anything like that, but it's one step towards what we want. Achieved. Okay, cruisers. Here's hoping missiles do look good, so I'm going to bet on it. Uh, should I have a mix? No, let's go full on missiles. Torps, torps, torps. Laser, 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 laser. Artillery. Let's go with that for now. And then the destroyers, also artillery, just for foot, not line artillery. Large and a medium. Could have used you for some picket defense there, actually, but too bad. So now we have the storm world, which gives us way more energy, which makes sense. 
at the cost of food, amenities, building costs, district costs, and housing. Wow, quite a bit then. And its unique building is... I don't know. So either it doesn't have a unique building, or perhaps we need a certain tech for it. I don't know. Either way, let's start putting down our clone vats. Gonna go a bit mad with it. Now, the thing is of clone vats is they actually go really, really well with the medical workers because of how gene clinics now work with the clone vats since they've changed. Gene clinics not only, well, the jobs not only give you the extra population growth, they also give you extra assembly speed, which is how the clone vats work. So by having both, you're essentially giving the medical workers double their output. Subjugating more primitives. They will learn the way of keeping their world beautiful, or horribly rusty looking as it is currently. So once again, this is a rare world. Don't know why all the uh, primitives seem to really like rare worlds, but there we are. Uh, what do I do here? So I'm going to want more of you. What are you? You have very strong... and so Okay, so energy. Not particularly great energy world, but not the worst. Could just use you as an energy world. I mean... Your species likes it, but you're really good at food production on this world. I am going to need more of that. So yeah, food processing, clone vats. Definitely going to have the research farm, because this produces a lot of food and a lot of society, and keeps on giving extra jobs later on. And then I'll also build... Actually, that's going to be pretty much it, right? Yeah, the clone vats as well. Since the gene clinics and clone vat combo is beautiful. And you should be full citizenship this time, right? Excellent. Now, I am tempted to give some of you uh, migration controls, but nope, we are... Again, we're not xenophobic. We just want to make sure we're in control so that we can make everything beautiful. As I've said, like, a hundred times at this point. I think I might be strong enough to actually attack back. So, yeah, let's start bringing the fight to the enemy. We are only equivalent to them. In fact, we're kind of equi uh, equivalent to most of the other empires right now. But we are growing rapidly. We've managed to grab way more worlds than the other empires. And our population growth is spiking. And we have loads of free jobs because of the blockers. So, that's cheap as well. Even our navy capacity is okay, considering we're losing over a third of it with all the different policies. That's pretty nice. Supremacy is now finished, giving us war doctrines, so what I'm going to want is rapid deployment for the extra range on those missiles, and then... So we're saving one specifically for the advanced version of genetics, but I also want future society, which we'll get in a second, because we're literally researching that tech right now. But it requires four other... Uh, yeah, it requires four others, so we could just grab Galactic Contender now. We definitely want that, because we're going to be fighting our our parents. We're also going to be fighting all the other uh, awakened, sorry, fallen empires all close to us. We want to do that as fast as we can to grab those special worlds. So yeah, let's grab Galactic Contender, and that will unlock, as soon as I get the tech future society, that way we can upgrade and have two extra civics. So now we have two more civic points and I've already spent it, so what we have now is militant zealots and social state. Social state of course being a more cooperative one, this will give us plus population growth speed, extra research from society, one extra leader when we choose leaders, and we also get our people to demote faster, which is lovely. The problem is you do have to have everyone on social welfare, which is costing a fair few consumer goods, but it is worth it in the long run just for that sheer population growth, and even administrators now provide extra amenities. It's a really powerful civic, in my opinion, which fits the Empire. And then, I decided we really need at least one spiritualist um, civic, so we have militant zealots. Which I think makes sense, since half of our goals here is all about nature, and preserving nature, and how the faith is entwined with that, I say half, so all of the goals. Templars also increase, uh, so let's look, see, they produce unity, stability, which is obviously very good. 
So I've chosen our two new civics. We have social state and militant zealots. So social state increases housing, it increases amenities from our administrators, but it does force everyone to be on social welfare, which is pretty expensive for us. But here's the main positive in my opinion, plus 15% growth speed and plus 5% to our research speed, our research speed society. It's just a really strong civic, which gets better the earlier you get it, because now more population growth on all of our worlds. We then have militant zealots. The reason is, we are meant to be spiritualist militarist, and we didn't really have a true spiritualist civic. I mean, we have this one. So I guess we actually already did, but I just didn't think it was being represented enough. This is also, this one is a more fun one. There are actually other ones I would have liked more, something like navy, sorry, naval traditions. I may swap one of these later for that, because extra fire rate is always good. Or something like Harmonious Collective. There's lots of stuff here which we could choose, and then loads of stuff we can't because there's so many civics now. But I just think this thing fits, and I think it's quite fun, because you get a new job type and that's always enjoyable. So there we are, we now have the Templars, which increase navy capacity and provide planetary armies. And that is actually taking some jobs from the Temples. So some of the priests have now been converted into Templars. And we are about to get into a proper fight, I think. No, don't run away! Fine, then run away. Well, it's only a small battle, but it'll do for now. Oh, look at us all healing because of our traits. Ooh, so straight away I'm noticing the missiles are definitely a lot more visible. Visible? Visible! Yes, they are visible. They are more visible. Come on, Minecraft Fire. I guess we do have torps, and torps are quite short range. Oh, look at that laser effect! Look how slow it moves! Oh, that's neat! Why are we not firing our torps? You have them! I know you do! Why are we not firing our main weapons? I don't... I am confused. There we go! I don't know why the delay was there, but we are firing them. It was getting a lot more um, striking. Oh, bigger explosions as well. One of them got shut down. That was cool. Okay, so first things first. It still looks like a Stellaris fight, which I'm actually quite happy with. They have a certain look to them. But yeah, definitely a bit more... Uh... The effects are more striking, so you can more easily tell what's going on at a quick glance. I love the laser effects. I am so sold on those, it's unbelievable. Dude, look how cool that looks! Especially in slow motion, like reaching- Oh, I need to just use laser spam now. I just want to see hundreds of those. That's so neat! I'm gonna follow you. Also, look at how everything's a lot more 3D. So that's one thing I already did know about this, since I think I mentioned it earlier, is now it's more 3D rather than them all kind of staying on one plane a lot more. At least I think that's been changed, unless I'm really bad at uh, understanding these things, but yeah, a lot more 3D, so a lot of the effects, for instance, this one here is firing and it's going all the way down here towards this poor thing. The fights are also definitely lasting a lot longer, the health is barely moving and I kind of like that. Oh, I love these cruisers! Yep. Sold on those. Don't know why we're not firing more weapons, though. I mean, I did just take out the other station, so maybe they were on a cooldown. Uh, how long does it take between firing the torps? The cooldown is... Da, 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 21 days. Okay, so... It could have just been on cooldown. We are using only torps, so these things do have a long delay on them. Oh, I'm guessing that, that missile got taken out. That's why it lost its effect. Can we see one? Please hit. Hit? Yes! And you're gone! Look at the explodey. I know I'm not very good at the whole cameramanship thing, but I am loving this. Yep. So sold. So, so sold. Though, I didn't need to actually pay attention to the map for a second. You're about to join the fight, correct? Okay, mostly Corvettes. Actually, that's not very good versus us. Sorry, I mean, we're not very good versus them. Oh, even in fast forward, the laser effects on the cruiser sitting there is just wonderful. Pew pew. I say in happiness. Just drive by missiles there. Okay, so here's the second group. 
Oh, we just ran right into them. So we definitely have better tech, but they have more ships. We should win this, but it's going to hurt us quite a lot. I have made a claim. Ooh, we might need to run, actually. Okay, so I thought the druid build would be super, super overpowered, but actually, oof. Maybe less so than I thought. Maybe the future. Now, I have made a claim on their home system, but we're definitely not getting that. I may actually retreat. Yeah. Those, those fleets would have got to us and we just would have lost everything. Now, here's an issue. I have no one defending that station, and although the station is strong, it will maybe get taken out if it's besieged by everything they have. Um, don't know what to do next, really. Four cruisers out of position versus our cruisers. A single corvette, no, sorry, four corvettes and one destroyer. Yeah, didn't have many survive after all that. Only really the cruisers. Trading laser fire there. But that's all I wanted to see. Yeah, strike craft are coming in, but hopefully... Oh no, they have so much point defense. Can some of the torps get there? They are armored after all. See, this is why you use the Whirlwind Missiles, because they can survive a lot of hits, and essentially there to uh, to overcome the enemy uh, point defense. We are using the Armored Torps now, which, although they're called that, they still don't have that much hull. There we go, overwhelming it through sheer number of Torps. All of the missiles. Wow, where are you all go? Oh, to the station. Oh, I wanted to hit the cruisers more. Wow, stopped in their tracks. And I bet we're being swarmed. Actually, where are the enemy strike craft? Strike craft? I see a couple of them here and there. Oh, the strike craft are being their usual super helpful selves. As soon as the enemy splits, it's just... Thankfully, at least we do have our lasers, and we do have a lot of them once we get... Fli okay, now we're being attacked by the strike craft. I kind of want to go strike craft spam, because I love those tiny little lasers. Look! Wow, they are just stopping our torps every time. Hard countering them. Yeah, the strike craft as well. We'll be shooting them down. We're slowly being knocked out here. Oh, okay. Whoops, I see. We were also starving because I wasn't paying any attention at all. Wow, I've never seen that so badly before. We won because of sheer number there. That was it. Yeah. Okay, so what if we swap the missile core over to the hangar core, and then that? Uh, strike craft tend to be a bit harder to knock out as well. Yeah, way more hull points, well, way more shields, and you have eight of them per core. Fire, that is. Uh, so yeah, that'll be the new version. So very similar. Just now, we're also using those. Do you want to stay as artillery? It's just the torps are so bad at that. So it's short range. Yeah, for now we will. Probably swap laser. Construction complete. Can we... Uh, we can almost status quo. That's what, I, that's what I really want to do, just status quo already. Tell you what, go around. They can't get past that station. Let's go around, damage that as well. Just keep on annoying them. Oh, Utopia Builders. Okay, so that's something I haven't seen before. It's definitely not in the vanilla game. Utopia Builders value the economical and social prosperity of their species above everything else. The government, no matter of its size, exists to make sure that nobody suffers from any kind of need, sickness, or poverty. We are the instrument of the void, weaklings, is our friendly response to that. Oh, another rare world. So this is the eyeball world, the tidally locked world, which has just one ocean. And then lots and lots of ice. And again, it's a primitive! Is that is that coded in that the primitives have a higher chance? Because that is just insane. That's part of the confederation we were just fighting. So right now, we are kind of trapped by other empires, which are all as strong as us. Ooh, maybe we have a chance versus you! The synergy. Uh, no federation. No. Ah, oh, defensive pact with the confederacy. Uh, who are the confederacy? You are the confederacy. You're miles away. Oh, I won't even count that as a fight. So, maybe you are the enemy we should fight then. I mean, 
you are fanatic competitive, the opposite of what we're kind of trying to do, at least in terms of cooperative. Shame you're not just outwardly aggressive to uh, worlds and such, but yeah, we could claim your home system and go after that. We'll claim this area. Yeah, I think that's who we'll go after. It's the only en enemy I can see right now, which we can be actively aggressive against. Without scaling difficulty, the starter difficulty can be a little bit overwhelming. But we are a very strong empire. Our economy is doing great, except for food, and even that's now catching up. We have loads of rare resources. Our tech is catching up. We're a very balanced empire, but we're doing well in pretty much every aspect. We are the jack of all trades. Master of none. Which is sometimes better than a master of one. Well, here's something I've heard about but never seen, and now I'm seeing it. I love it. The bioprocessing plant. Planet limit is only one, which is a shame. It consumes 27 food to produce 15, 17 energy, 5 alloys, and 3 consumer goods. This facility houses industrial-grade equipment designed to isolate and extract compounds from various plants and crops. Such compounds are further studied, processed, and applied as biofuels, composite materials, and consumer goods. We are going to really need some serious farming worlds, but this is... That's such a good deal. 27 food for all that? I mean... Yeah, that's going to be on like, every single world I have. Uh, don't I have bonuses to the biochemists? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's being an ecocentric suit which even allows you to build it in the first place. But didn't I have one which upgrades the bio... Oh, no, did I say no to one of the ones which upgrades it? I think I may have seen it as well when I was choosing some of my options. Because I'm sure I read one that was increasing the strength of that. I thought it was Defenders of Nature, but... Oh yeah, there we go at the bottom. So, biotechnologists additionally consume one extra food to produce an extra bit of alloy. Okay. I wonder if there's more with that. That's really good. Now going to war with the Synergy, and look! We have little lasery strike craft. They do seem smaller than usual. Are they normally that small? I think the, uh, the tiles are less pronounced. That's what it is. Look at that, though. Just loads of little shots. Love it, love it, love it. I already love Strikecraft, I already love Missiles, and this mod has made both of them more pronounced, so obviously, I'm very, very happy. We just got Climate Restoration, which means now we have a World Shaper. So we can now convert all of our worlds into whatever we want. Wow, a basalt world. Basalt? Basalt? Whatever it is, we can make it. What about all the really rare... I think I saw Rogue then, as I was... Going past really quickly. Yeah, we can even make storm. Oh, we can turn all the worlds into storm worlds, tidally locked worlds, apps, badlands. Oh, there's so many options. Coral. I know it's one of the rares. Oh, there are so many options. Machine world. We can't do that. Okay, I was gonna say if we could do that, that'd be really weird. Oh, I've just realised it's in bio. <laughs> I just realised it's in alphabetical. I thought it was in like type, like all the wet ones. Okay. So there's that, our bioluminescence. So, I think if you turn a world into a Gaia world, it removes all of the blockers. I'm not sure if that's definitely true, but I'm going to test it out. So I'm going to turn... Why is that so cheap? That's forest. There we go. So, I'm going to test that out on one of our worlds. If it removes all the blockers, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to turn everything into our beautiful bioluminescent. If it does do that... So if it doesn't do that, then we're going to go kind of half and half, because I like the idea of choking loads of worlds into these bioluminescent just... Because it's choking. It's just choking all life on the world. We're not actually choking the worlds themselves. That would be weird. But uh, yeah, it's just choked with all that spory goodness. I mean, it is a really good set of buffs, but it's just not as good as a Gaia world. <laughs> a Gaia world is just fantastic. I mean, we could have a mix of all the rare worlds. All of our forge worlds become... Oh, we could do that. All of our forge worlds become primal. But even then, is this... better than Gaia, even for forge? I don't know just yet, but obviously we need more energy first, so we'll wait until after this war, then we'll decide on what we're going to do. So far, they haven't put up any resistance, which is... Odd, considering how good these two are. And these are stronger than us, by the way, and these were definitely not an advanced start. Though it looks like the synergies have kind of been split into two. I don't know what's happened there. Maybe they had a really bad time. They could have been at war. Yeah, they are being hated. They could have been at war a lot. So we're kind of taking advantage of that. Yay! Defend! Oh, that's really weak. Why are you so weak? Still weak. 
Yep, that's still very weak. The strike craft are so much more swarmy now, now they're not all just above the uh, station. Okay, I know I'm harping on about this way too much, but it makes me happy. Look at the swarm going towards the camera then! I'm going high pitch I'm that happy with this mod. Okay, I don't want to spoil this one too much, um, because I do want to use this origin eventually, but for some reason we've got it to happen here. In the storm world, it turns out there's an animal causing a lot of the storms, so I'm not going to spoil the story for it, except for that one or um, little bit there. I've already gone through a few bits, but just know it's happening. Currently, the storm world, something's weird, something weird under the waves is happening. Uh, you know, actually get that fleet first, otherwise it might take out our ground forces. Ooh, and that, so that. Then you. Then over there. Can I climb anything yet? Ooh, I could take that world as well. Ooh, weird. Could take that world as well. How good is that world? Five populations, it's just a glacial world. Just super, super cold. Scientific breakthrough. So I think these are using kinetic weapons. That's for little shots. Still look a bit energy-based, but I'm fairly certain they're the kinetic ones. And yeah, even the explosions are a little bit cooler. Slowly, their own station is destroying them, though, so... It's cool, but a bit self-defeating at the same time. <laughs> You're under attack by the other empire. Two other empires are attacking you! Ah, uh, attacking because of, um... Convenience, I suppose. You know what? I'm gonna take this little cluster. These three starter worlds of yours will soon be mine. I can't even form a federation, which is really annoying, since I'm with the Scion. I can't wait to beat up you, you penguiny buggers. The best possible outcome. So we just sold loads of alloys and made an absolute fortune, because now we do have the galactic market. We're not very good with the market, our market fee is pretty bad, but yeah, uh... Lots of energy, which means we can start converting worlds. So I have one world being converted into a Gaia, one being converted into a Bioluminescent, and I'm going to see the effects that has, and then decide how we're going to deal with the entire galaxy. Now, if I really wanted to min-max, like I said, what we could do is have specific worlds for specific things. So for food, I'd probably go with the Lycan, or Lichen, or however it's pronounced, this one, because plus 20%, and then their unique building provides food. It's... Honestly, my favourite of the planet so far, just based on its stats. I love that because it's all nice and simple, provides loads, and because we're having so many of these, the bioprocessing plants, which are fantastic, we kind of want as much food as possible. So that's what I would do if I was just doing it for stats, but obviously I'm not. It's all meant to be for the Empire, for our end goals. Are we going to turn the entire galaxy into one giant lovely spore, or are we going to go with Gaia, because that's more fitting of the theme of everything being perfect, so... Both of them fit our end goal. I just don't know really which one. It depends on what happens when they convert, really, more so than anything else. So, as usual, I would like one of you. I would then also like a clone of that, if I can find... There we are. And upgrade. And now let's take a look at our new worlds we just got. So, neither of you have any blockers, sadly. That's what I was just working on. So what should you be, then? What type of world is that? A sub-temperate, mountainous world. It consists of coastal forests and towering mountain ranges, an active stormy hydrosphere with strong differences between snowy winters and short, warm summers. It's very green. Then the other world is just a boring ocean world, because they were boring. Yeah, what to do with these worlds? I'm obviously going to be putting down a bioprocessing plant on both of them. Yeah, when we get the plant your capital, we can put down another one. Uh, I may actually make make it into an alloy world. I want to go into mega structures, I believe. So I definitely going to need more alloy production, and this is just ready for it. So yeah, a lot of the worlds got destroyed because they were only usable by that type of empire. That did have full world, uh, sorry, full buildings. I'm sure of it. Now far less so. In fact, a lot of uh, people no longer have jobs. Why aren't you taking the ruler job? Yeah, full citizenship. Um, what's going on? There we go. Just updated weirdly, apparently. Oh, loads of clerks. That's rubbish for us. We don't want that. So you're going to change you for the alloy version. 
And I'll turn you into an alloy. Wait, you have... How do you have both? You're not meant to be able to have both. Weird. I'll change you for something else later. So we've unlocked one of the authorities. We have centralized and federalized. Uh, these two I'm going to purely go off stats, honestly. So if centralized, we get more influence. So straight away, fantastic, plus 0 0.5 influence per month. That is a lot, especially if we're going to habitats and mega structures. We can already build habitats, and I'm tempted to start because this is a way of getting lots of extra resources without affecting planets, because our whole thing is planets should be perfect, should be beautiful, etc. We could just live on the habitats. It would fit our theme. The second option increases our admin cap by 5%, but all clerks give plus 3 admin cap each. We don't have many of them, but we do have them in the Empire to keep our amenities high. That would deal with our with, with our admin cap forever. But I really think the centralized is better for the extra influence. Yeah, I just, I need more influence. It's going to be the thing which is holding us back from now on, and I think it is for the best. The other one would definitely make everything a lot simpler, but I think that is definitely the best option out of the two. The second I had a decent food intake, uh, sorry, food income, I instantly, of course, activated Nutritional Plenitude. This increases our population growth by 10% at the cost of 25% extra food upkeep and more Empire Sprawl from our pops. But it also makes them happier, so... Happiness is pretty good for happy. Yeah, we, we are very, very happy people. And now they grow even faster. Which is going to be increased even further once we have the tech to give those special traits. Yeah, we've been building so many things. Shall I build our first um, habitat? I think we should. Sure, right there. They cost 150 influence each, but they're gonna pay off in the long run. Definitely a lot of in the long run decisions this game. I wonder if we're strong enough to deal with these now. I mean, we should be, right? Yeah, I think it's time to attack the Confederation. Let's build some... We can build battleships. Do we have an X-sized weapon? Yes, I want to see what this is like. Even better, the particle lance will look amazing. We are terrible versus shields. Uh, because the strike craft are ignoring them, then all of our other weapons have negatives versus them. Not the best. Also, our shields are rubbish. Why are we going so heavily into anti-armor stuff and armor? If, if we fight the Scourge, we'll be great. If we fight anything else, we'll be doomed. <laughs> Doomed class. Yep, that sounds like a type of ship you'd want to be on, the Doomed. Also, we're now swapping from Expansionist over to Belligerent. More Navy capacity, less war exhaustion gain, and claims are cheaper. Oh, I just realised that means the L gates are open. Go, go, go! At least one construction vessel. Get over there as soon as you can. Uh, just move towards the L gate for now so you can jump. Oh, one on the L gate waiting. Yeah, I want. I definitely want the L gate. Ah, uh, darn it. Okay, so being turned into a Gaia world does strip it of all the natural blockers. That's awful for this empire. Loads of jobs lost. Uh, we do get multiple ecosystems, which is nice. Tr but it's extra trade value. We don't care about that. And a few extra districts. I mean, yeah, there's loads more districts now because the blockers have been removed. So it isn't really a negative, but it doesn't fit the Empire. I'm hoping the Bioluminescent doesn't do the same. No, they both do the same! Crap. So... So, uh, we'll just hit the microphone then. Um, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's rubbish. Crud. Uh, to deal with those. So. Yeah, I really don't want to do there. Uh, I think out of the two, then, the Gaia world is the better option. Though I think I'll do a mix of the two, just because it's more fun. Yeah, I am. 
completely at a loss here because I don't really want to do that because I like the planetary features giving us all these things. Not only does it benefit us, but obviously it fits the theme of the Empire, which is a big deal. Now, the Gaia worlds, even without the blocker, it's obviously better because although, yeah, we're losing the blockers, we're gaining one, two, three, or five extra districts, and then Gaia Worlds with this mod also give you multiple ecosystems, giving you an additional two. So we're gaining at least two, and plus 10% happiness, and 10% resources to everything. The Bioluminescent Worlds aren't actually as good. Uh... So yeah, I think a mix. I think a mix of the two. We could just go... Okay, we could go with the original idea I had as well of doing all the different rare worlds, but I'm just not sure. I'm just really not sure, and I'm so unsure. I'm tempted to make this a two-parter to ask people because I am completely at an, at an impasse here. With part one being far shorter and part two being far longer, taking over the galaxy. System survey complete. Okay, once these are upgraded, we're going to go into war with uh, these fellows. We've just made claims all the way down here, so now we can get access to all their main worlds. But yeah. Okay, over here we've just surveyed the first system. Which means we're going to get access to the Elgate. Now, the Elgate isn't as good this time because you can't turn the Nanite worlds into normal worlds. Because there isn't the Elgate event, because of the Drakes. But it's still good. It still connects us to the galaxy. So I've had a little break there just to think about it more. And I am now tempted to go with the third option, which was to convert the worlds based on our needs. Because all of the different rare worlds are all the extremes of nature. We love them anyway. And this way we are more attuned with nature. We're getting more consumer goods, for instance, from this type of world. So we make our consumer goods on those worlds. We convert them to our needs while still letting them thrive. Even the more brutal of the rare worlds are still thriving and magnificent. There's huge creatures under the water of the storm worlds and under the water life thrives, etc. We have geothermal worlds for energy. In fact, I'll actually look up which worlds are best to which because some of them I simply haven't seen before. So I'll do that off camera. Storm worlds obviously will be our generator worlds. So we are making the world still thrive. We are still living with in harmony with them. But we are changing them to our needs at the same time. I don't know if that fits the Empire enough. But I really do think it does. And I'm not articulating it very well. That would also be the best for our Empire strength wise admittedly. So I don't really mind if it's not that one. Um, going with full Gaia is also very powerful, and going full Bioluminescent is still pretty good. It's still a very good world type. It increases happiness, which means more stability straight off the bat. We get more food, which we desperately need. More society research, which is great to increase food and uh, admin cap and everything else later on. Consumer goods, obviously, we're going to need because we have social welfare for everyone, which costs a lot. We are producing a lot of consumer goods right now. We're only, well, we're less than plus 100 per month, despite that. And our population is growing quickly. So, all the options are very strong. Converting the worlds individually will take a lot more min-maxing, so I'll have to convert the entire galaxy. Um, but it would be the strongest. Gaia would be probably second strongest, but then very close after Bioluminescent. Yeah. After this war, I may call the video and uh, potentially post a poll. I'll give a full detail in the comments below if I've done this, or whatever. Oh, look at that. So those are the X-size weapon. Oh, look, one's still on, on its way. Like lances. <laughs> oh, I like that. So and those are the neutron launchers. And, gotta be honest, not too shocking. I mean, they're pretty, and they're a bit more spinny. Ooh, very cool explosions. Oh, very cool explosions. Oh, that's really nice. Then we should have strike craft. Where are your strike craft? Wait, no, these are the torps. No, they're definitely the... Yeah, they're the battleships. Yeah, where's the strike craft? Oh, there they are. We just moved faster than them, apparently. Did I not give them the right AI? 
No, I did. Um, I know they're fast because... Actually, yeah, I don't really know why they um, got so close in that fight, to be perfectly honest. Still, really cool. We'll be able to crush the enemy now. We are definitely stronger at this point. All the all the mid to light game investments are now paying off a lot, and it is pretty fantastic. Where did my scientist go? I sent a scientist right over there. What happened? Unless he just isn't there yet. Which he should be, though. Oh, no, it wasn't there yet. That's weird. Okay. This time the battleship stayed back, and they sent out the strike craft earlier. I don't know what happened in the first fight. I like that as a swarm upgrades, its uh, its weapons change colour. I love that. Oh, good, we can uh, befriend the next Drake. A little swarm. I've got such a silly grin on my face because of this fight right now. Definitely need to keep missiles around. Strikecraft versus Strikecraft. Even that takes a bit longer than usual. I don't know if that's in my head, but yeah, the battles are definitely taking a lot longer than I am used to. Again, could be in my head. Oh, I love these lasers so much. Yeah, need more battleships. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. <laughs> I'm a very simple person to uh, please, to be honest. Give me shinier lasers and more showy missiles, and I am a very happy person. Oh, they actually have some pretty scary fleets, but they're all... Yeah, they're all trying to attack over here instead. So just let us grab all of those. We can almost take us... Oh, they had a defend, I didn't realise. Uh... We'd lose a world if we stuck with it right now. So yeah, get that world back, then we'll status quo, and that'll give us victory. It'll, well, it'll give us status quo, but it'll give us everything we want. We'll accept this for now. Most of your worlds now belong to us. You two can get back. So what's next then? Either the Empire of Athos... That's a name. Or we go after the Synergies again, this time probably destroying them. Or we could start prepping to attack our parents. Now the problem with our parents is that they're going to be really good versus our anti-armor stuff because they are, they are mostly shields. So although the Strikecraft will be great and they use Strikecraft, which we're going to counter by just sheer number, we're not going to be able to get through them. So what we need is the excise weapon, the Archimitter? So I'm going to try and find that, because then we can ignore the shields and armor and go straight for their hull, which is their smallest. Uh, they have far less hull than they have armor and shields combined, so that plus the strike craft should be pretty good versus them. Because once we have, no, we're not eliminated, but once we're free from the overlords, then we can start putting other empires as our subjects and then just integrating them, because right now it just costs way too much influence to do everything else. So because we're going to wait until that, what we're going to do is start building habitats with that influence rather than making claims, at least for the time being. Our species has been upgraded. There we are, we're now fertile, rather than rapid breeders, so it's gone from 10% to a full 30% extra population growth speed and even less housing usage. We are now robust, giving us extra habitability on top of everything else. Uh, that's much better than extremely adaptive, well it's plus 10%, but it also gives you plus 5% to resources for more jobs and increases our lifespan drastically. Which is weird because I've left fleeting, don't really consider that. But now, rather than intelligent, we are the upgraded version, giving us an extra leader level cap and extra output. I will be removing these soon, since I haven't got all of the genetic points yet. I haven't got all the rare tech for it, so I'll be removing those to fit a little bit better later on. 
But still, that's our first species now, and let's make sure all of them have it. Then I'll start grading some of the others we have as well. Basically, similar concept, they're fertile, robust, and that. That means, essentially, they're going to have near 100% habitability on any planet type. Yeah, 80% here on the primal world, which before they were struggling with, we're absolutely fine. Which also means when we do terraforming, we don't have a concern when it comes to which species is where, because our species can live everywhere. It just makes sense for us. So we are adapting for the worlds as well. They adapt for us, we adapt for them, everyone adapts. We're not quite yet ready to face off against our parents, so we go to war with someone else. Because of the L gates, which are lovely, we now have access to this area nice and cheaply, so I'm going against the Empire of Athos. They are very weak, they're already at war with two other empires, they are just constantly warring with everyone else, because they're evil! I mean, we're not exactly nice ourselves, but we're not their level at least. Can we afford just a little bit extra please? Any, um, is there any worlds they haven't grabbed? I literally don't know. But still, do you want all of this? Probably best to grab this one if we can, so next time it'll be easier to grab more of their worlds. But for now, we're just turning this area into a little outpost for us, which will be nice. Oh, there we go! Mega engineering. Shan, there's no ruined mega structures. Oh, wait, no, yeah, there is one, but it's a sentry around my least favourite, so I kind of forgot about its, its existence. Look how cool that looks! So many, I mean, I wish you'd split your shots a bit more, but... Oh wow, even the point defense is a lot more distinct. There we go, most of the enemy missiles is being shot down there. I am starting to love the neutron launchers as well. It's how they spin. It makes me happy. Okay, you're gonna save that. Sorry, you're not taking out asteroid craft anytime soon with your cruisers. For we are strike craft. Naturally, I follow the one which isn't being attacked by strike craft, but you get the idea. Goodbye. Ooh, void spawn, void wor void worm. Oh, just the ether drake. Okay, I was a bit confused there. Wow, loads of the um, I forgot what they're called now. But the big boys are over here. Okay, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Just because there's so many here, and we're about to get full access. In which case, I'm actually gonna put a claim here as well. That way we can get access to all these and get all those bonuses. Normally I don't go after them, and I'm kind of I'm very guilty of that. I really should go after them, but when they're all so close like that, I mean I have to, right? Ooh, hopefully I'll um, befriend this fellow as well eventually. Thanks to that uplift, we got loads more in the way of influence. So because of that, I've just made a claim on their home world and their first world. We're going to have a lot of worlds under our control. I just realised, I don't still have... some improving relations, do I, with you? Because we have three separate, so... Oh, we're at war with you! Oh, you're defending them, but you're already at war with someone else, so you haven't sent any ships. Wow, me attacking when you were busy was a good idea. Very smart. Me not understanding that you were the ones defending, less smart, more... Me, honestly. Okay, scientist, you stay there. Just because I am going to be destroying these soon, I'm going to need a, uh, a tech. I'm also going to need a construction vessel and some influence to spare, so... Lovely. Soon enough, this will be over, and we'll have a nice chunk more of space. We 
We are tracking an enemy fleet. Yeah, the strike craft actually having a shot which moves just makes it look so much more satisfying. Again, I know I'm focusing on it too much, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, yeah that'll be down in a second. Does anyone? Okay, you're finally attacking us. But it doesn't really matter all that much, honestly. I guess, sure, you go and deal with them. Could send the Eldrakes, they're probably strong enough. We are tracking an enemy fleet. The war was won, the border gore commenced. So we now have a lot new- ooh, a crag world. And again, they definitely had uh, a lot more buildings than this. I saw them. This was full. I don't know what to do with them though. Uh, what we're gonna do though is quickly destroy all those leviathans? Is that what they're called? The big boys again. Also, it turns out, look. Mega shipyard. Obviously I want that. Let's get all of our fleets together. Science vessel, please move here. Having two of them would actually be vastly beneficial. And construction vessel as well, grab that for now. So we have the Devourer, the Void Spawn, and the Ether Drake. We have a Salt World, which apparently is the Mineral World. Actually, I do remember that. It's one of the few ones I did remember. Um, I'm going to turn you into a new Forge World. We have loads of Forge Worlds. Built a few too many of them, but too bad. That's just what's happening now. Sure, you can stay as a bureaucratic, just random one. Just add some um, gas refineries and the clone vats. Speaking of which, though, we do definitely need some more food production soon. Hello, new farming world. You're not a particularly great farming world, but you'll do for now. So here's the Devourer. Apparently, without any shielding, is it just hull? Oh, that's great. We do bonus damage versus hull. So these lovely red beams of death are going to be perfect. I say that, I can't really see much health going down, though it's actually very hard to see its health pool. Oh, there you go, that's an easier way of seeing it. Oh, wow, this thing's way harder to kill than I remember. I mean, we're not really losing much health ourselves, but it's just taking a beating. Could just be because of the mod. Just a swarm around it as well. Construction complete. Study the corpse or make a trophy. I believe with the corpse, you can turn some of these worlds back to life. Ah, oh, but 500 influence is just crazy. 500 influence, we get a trophy on the world, which produces happiness, but no, I think we'll study the corpse. Okay, move into position. Next will be the Ether Drake. Scientist, go and do your thing. Other scientist, go and survey. Speed. Trying to reignite the star. Whoa, okay, start back online. There's a Tundra world, and a Gaia world, yep, so that was definitely worth it in the long run. Okay, move you over here. In fact, move you over here, let's see if we can talk to that Drake as well, because I think one of my other scientists just started talking to a Drake as well. Yeah, we're getting loads of them. We now have three of the Eldrakes. I'm just collecting them all, it's like Pokemon. Okay, next up. The Ether Drake. Initiating tactical okay, armor and hull. So that's great for us. Uh, not interested. So I'm befriending some drake, so I'm swarming the others. It's firing little bolts at our ships. Oh, the one is very close to going down. Come on, can we kill it without any losses? Dragon Slayer. 
300 influence, and we get the Relic. Which just increases happiness. Actually, it's a pretty nice active effect, really. Um, Monthly Unity, obviously we don't need that. We have like 300k, and until we get the Ascension research, we can't use that. So then next up is the Void Spawn, which I think gives you the jump tech. Where are the other Leviathans? I'm actually having fun with this, so I'd like to try and kill the others if possible. Uh, you have no idea where they are, though, which is a bit of a problem. What's the easiest way to look for them? I bet there's a way to look for them specifically, but I can't see it right now. I'll just make sure to um, take them out as I take out other empires. I'll make sure to put some effort in and destroy them. Ah, here it is. Oh, that's the Void Spawn. Oh! I was thinking of the horror, is it called? Look, there's his egg. I was thinking of the completely wrong one. It's just a baby, but we're still going to get rid of it because, wow, this thing must get huge and eventually. Once again, all armor, no shields. I mean, it makes sense for these things to be all armor and shield, uh, armor and hull. There's a lot more green coming from our strike craft. Is it shooting our strike craft or is that just our strike craft shooting? Beautiful. Obviously, we're going to research the shards. Scientific. Okay, so it's the world's about to be inhabited. Uh, oof, no uh, blockers, so it's a bit of a shame for us, but Grand Canyon. Nice. Happiness and minerals. And you have... You actually do have a blocker, so that's wonderful. Natural System beauty, a tundra world. Okay, good. So we've survived that nice and quickly, so we can grab that. Just about to finish the egg shard Special tech, and we get complete. gargantuan evolution. Have a quick look see at that now. Oh, finally, gateway travel. We can start building gateways everywhere, which we need. Oh, just plus 5% energy from jobs. Yeah, nice. Nice bonus there from killing the Leviathan. Yeah, I really do need to start taking out the Leviathans a little bit quicker. Oh, I have Bubbles over here, all trapped. Okay, Bubbles, go and join the, the Drake collection. One more is currently on its way. <laughs> and I'm trying to get these fellows to open their borders, because uh, I really want to grab that last one, if possible. Do you like alloys? Ooh, I've got some gas. Dark matter? Yeah, dark matter is the key in the end. Please. Scientific breakthrough Wary, is that enough? Nope, still. Wow, you closed borders of everyone, haven't you? Systems Except for us! Cool. Yes, lovely. Okay, uh, all I need to do is get one of the scientists to go there, then I'll give you the event, and then we can get one more Drake before the end of the video, because I just have to. I just have to. Well, our overlords just gave us jump drives, which I didn't want, because it could make the unbin spawn early. Thank you. So kind. I really need to go to war with you, Dan. If we just, like, scaled insanely over the last little while- You know what? I think we have. Our economy kind of exploded, then our tech exploded, and now our missiles are exploding. Because apparently you're pathetic. You were, like, equal to me up until, like, 20 years ago. Well, that's the thing. Okay, yeah, so we've grabbed all these worlds. Dragon's Horde is over here. We're about to build a mining base on that. That can eventually give you an event, which can give you an egg, or it can give you tech, I believe. I think it can do one of the two. We're also currently researching gateways, so we can finally build gateways, which will be so useful. Building over here, building over here, because although trade value is not what we're going for at all, because we just don't get much of a benefit out of it, we do still want the trade value we have to be collected. Some trade value is going to be generated. So we want that. Currently we have... What was our trade policy again? Yeah, social development. So it's consumer goods, food, stuff like that. We definitely want that. Or we could go with infrastructure development. More building speed. Oh, including a ship build speed. And it gives us some alloys. At the moment, though, it's food. Shame we can't go for the actual, just pure food one over here, but... 
Yeah, that's decent. We could go with the alloy option. An alien empire wishes to. So I've just looked back at the footage, and because of me just looking at every last fight and everything else and just being amazed by it all, I've now realised that a lot of this is going to be actually in the video itself, so hopefully the video will be of a decent length for a full playthrough. But of course, this is just part one. There is going to at least be one more part after this, and most importantly, in the comments, there will be discussion of a poll to talk about how we're going to deal with the planets. Are we going to change each planet to suit our needs? Still going with the whole eco thing, but more specific to our empire. Are we going to turn them all Gaia, because Gaia is apparently the perfect for life? Or are we going to choke them all with spores, with the bioluminescence, because of our whole, you know, Church of the Holy Spore thing? All three of these, I think, will give us the achievement of changing all the worlds to something perfect, but all three are different, I don't know which to choose, and that's the main reason I'm going to cut here, because I want to see some feedback. So comments are very welcome explaining why, but there will be a poll in the community tab, probably within 24 hours after posting this, and I will have the final part of this, or at least the next part of this full playthrough, within the next week or so, because these do of course take a very long time to record, although it's only part one, it has taken four days just to get the footage for, and this is before editing and everything else. So hopefully, soon, because I have had so much fun recording this, it's been utterly insane. So with that, Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Also, a helicopter just went really close to our building and it was really loud. That's really weird. They know I'm still recording at 3am and I shouldn't be. I must go.